Today's video is sponsored by, no, no, I'm joking. Today's video was requested by Stuart. Stuart wants to know how does sharpening and the noise reduction tool interact. So let's take a closer look at the second step of Capture One's sharpening workflow, the creative sharpening. Sharpening tutorial coming up. Hi everyone, my name is Kasia Zmokwa. Welcome to my channel where you will always find photo editing training and educational videos to help you grow as an artist and photographer. So the previous video that I have published was related to sharpening. I have published one lesson from my course on Capture One and it seems that you have still more questions that you want to learn more in detail about the sharpening tool. So today we are going to be looking at different examples. I'm going to be talking about the sharpening tool and its application depending on an image. And we are going to be talking about the noise reduction as well. So before we take a deep dive into the sharpening tool, let's just make sure that we are all at the same page. For those of you who haven't seen the previous video on sharpening, I'm just going to include the link down below and it should appear in the upper right corner right now. So let's just recap. What is the three step sharpening workflow in Capture One? The first step, the capture sharpening applies basically sharpening automatically right when you are importing your image to Capture One. So it depends on the camera body, on the camera lens. Capture One is calculating the best sharpening that it thinks it is the best for your particular image and you have nothing to do about this. So basically you can adjust it later on, but the first step, the capture sharpening, this is what you are getting out of the box. Today we are going to be focusing on the second step of this sharpening workflow, creative sharpening. So at this stage we are adjusting sharpening manually. We can decide that Capture One applied too much of a sharpening so we can soften it or we can make it stronger, we can take a look at particular image and work in a targeted way, so we can enhance just selected areas in the image. So this is all what can be done in the creative sharpening. And the third step of Capture One's sharpening workflow is the output sharpening. So I've seen that some of you requested a video on this as well. So if you want me to do a separate video, I can definitely do this. So you are asking for a tutorial on preparing images for social media, for Instagram and Facebook, how to sharpen images when you want to publish them on social media. If you want me to do this video, just let me know in the comments down below. So today we are going to be focusing on the second step. We will be taking a look at different images and we will be analyzing what would be the best way to approach them in terms of sharpening. So first, let's just make it clear what is sharpening. So sharpening always means increasing contrast. And maybe just for this video, but I want you to start thinking that when you are sharpening your image, you are increasing contrast. And not only in the typical way of adding micro contrast. So for example, if I would say that I want to sharpen this image, so the first thing that comes to my mind would be going up to 100%. I'm on a retina display, so I should actually go for 200%. And when I'm thinking about adding sharpening to this image, I'm thinking of making the hair a little bit stronger, enhancing the texture of the leaf and so on. So this would be the micro sharpening. This would be adding sharpening, adding contrast at the micro level. But what I just mentioned is I want you to start thinking about this whole concept of increasing contrast, of adding sharpening at the much wider angle. So we can basically increase contrast in four ways and 
this can be done depending on adjusted area. So this I would break down into four different ways. So the first way would be the most global and we are going to go down to the adding contrast to increasing sharpness at the micro level. So let's start with the first one that treats our image in the most global way. And this will be actually just adding contrast. So when we are looking at this image, let me just show you the original version. So this is the image before adding any adjustments. This is the image after adjusting luminosity and after applying some basic color grading. So you can see that by working with color and by applying some luminosity adjustments, I have actually enhanced contrast. So by doing this, I have made the background darker and that way the subject stands out way stronger than here. I have made the background colder as well. So I have introduced here the concept of color contrast, but we are not going to be talking about this today. Let's just focus on the luma contrast, the contrast of light and shadow. So by increasing the contrast between the subject and the background, so here I was working on a global way, I was operating on a large areas in this image, but I can say that I have made the image sharper. So if we take a look at this edge of her hair standing against the background and here her arm, we can say that these edges got sharper in comparison to the original image and I haven't applied any additional sharpening to the image. So all the adjustments in terms of sharpening are just applied automatically by capture one during the capture stage. So this is what I mean by looking at the sharpening process, by looking at the process of adding contrast in a really large wide angle. So the first step will be adding contrast with tools such as contrast. So the easiest would be using the contrast slider here in the exposure tool. Then we can as well add contrast as I've actually done in case of this image with the curves, you can use as well levels. So this is the first way of adding contrast, taking in consideration really large areas, making certain areas darker and certain areas brighter. So the contrast gets enhanced and certain parts in the image stand out stronger, get more emphasis. So the first way, contrast. The second way of of adding contrast, of adding sharpness to the image would be with clarity. So as you remember, I've just mentioned at the beginning that we are going to go from the most global towards the tools, the target sharpening and the micro level. So the most global contrast. The next one, clarity. Why clarity? Because let's just maybe take a look at our clarity tool. Let's just pull it out and let's create new adjustment layer here. Let's just make this tab a little bit bigger. And here I'm just going to add a new field adjustment layer. So on this layer, we can experiment with clarity. So now clarity is set at zero. Let's observe what happens to our image when we push this slider towards the right hand side. So as we can see, it affected our image in a bit less global way in comparison to contrast, but still it just looks for areas that are brighter. Then it looks at the areas, the neighboring areas that are darker and it increases contrast. So basically with clarity, you are always adding contrast to the midtones. So this affects the midtones the strongest way. So before applying clarity and after applying clarity, you can see that these bright areas here, the texture was enhanced just a bit and the areas that got enhanced the most is actually what we wanted to keep quiet, to keep dark and to just push it further from the viewer attention, we made the background darker and with the clarity slider, it pops out stronger. So again, before applying clarity and after. So this is the second way, the a bit more detailed way comparing to contrast. Let's take a look at the 
third way. So first was just contrast. The second, clarity. Clarity adds punch. It adds pop to the image. The third way would be adding sharpness, adding contrast to the image with structure tool. So structure is positioned just here under the clarity. And in comparison to clarity, when we enhance structure, this will fix soft detail. So if we have something that is a little bit soft and we would like to make the its texture enhance if we would like to make the texture really visible. So let's take a look at the leaf. So if I start working with the clarity slider, if I push it all the way to the right, you can see how strongly it affected its texture. But don't forget about what I just said at the beginning that adding sharpness it's only about adding perceived sharpness because the data that you have captured in your raw file, you can't uh, change it at this point. It is what you got. You have no further control over it and you can now process the data. So basically there is no way to add more detail to the image. What you can do now at the post-processing stage, you can change how the detail is perceived. So you can make it sharp you can make it strongly visible or you can soften it. And all the sharpening is about enhancing contrast. So you can see that basically the areas that were brighter got basically pushed towards stronger luminosity values. And those areas that were darker got pushed in the opposite direction. So let's just take a preview if I switch this off. So this is the image before applying structure, very soft. And now after applying structure at such a strong value, 86, you can and see how this increased basically contrast between the bright and dark areas. And this creates the perceived sharpness in the image. So again, before and after. So this was the third way of adding sharpness to the image. So we have started with the global way with contrast. The second was clarity. Now we got more towards the micro contrast. So for this, we would use structure. And the last one that targets sharpening at the really micro level would be using the sharpening dedicated tool, the sharpening tool. So let's just jump over to the details tab. And here we have our sharpening tool. We are going to take a look at the noise reduction as well. So let's pull both of them out so we can focus on these tools today. So with the sharpening tool, we have way more control over the whole process. As you can see, we have dedicated sliders to control the process. But before we start talking about sharpening tool, I want to go back again to clarity because very often clarity and structure are basically used to add sharpness to images. And sometimes it is called sort of adding sharpness in a lazy way. And to be honest, I don't agree with this because at times, of course, it all depends on the image at hand. So the question how much sharpening uh, the image needs, it is always depending on the particular image. So first of all, you need to assess the image. You need to check what is the subject in your image. You would treat soft, dreamy images, portraits in a completely different way than sort of landscapes that have rocks in them or some sharp areas, some sharp objects or objects that ask for enhanced texture. So the subject of the image, then you would take into consideration the resolution of the image. This affects very strongly the how you would apply sharpening to your image. Next, you have to look at the noise that your image already has out of the box the noise that is before even adding an enhancement. So this depends again on the ISO. And in the end, of course, the amount of sharpening depends on your personal taste. 
So when I hear people saying that adding sharpness to the image with the clarity tool, that it is a lazy way of doing this, I don't really agree because it depends on an image. For certain images, this is more than enough and for sure applying sharpening to your images with clarity and structure is way faster and it doesn't require such a tailored adjustments as in case of sharpening tool. We'll cover sharpening tool in a second. So in case of this particular image, as I've said at the beginning, I haven't applied any sharpening here yet. So this is the layer that I have created just to experiment with clarity, but we have reset the value. So there is no sharpening added during the processing. So no sharpening added during the creative processing, the second step of Capture One's sharpening workflow. There is sharpening, there was sharpening added during the capture stage and this you can very easily check on the background layer because the capture sharpening will be always applied here and as you can see here by default capture one applied the amount at 140 radius 0.1 and threshold at one so if i hit reset here nothing happens because this is what capture one perceives for the best way of adding sharpening i can manually decrease this i can go all the way to the zero so this soften the image or i can increase it so this would be the creative sharpening this will be the manual enhancement so again if i reset this is the sort of sweet point that capture one considers that is working the best that is the most beneficial for this particular image so this is the only sharpening that was applied out of the box automatically the first step of sharpening the capture sharpening so if we would want to add sharpening to this image let's assess so let's not just think about adding sharpening at the micro level let's think wider so let's consider all the four ways that i've just mentioned the contrast clarity structure or sharpening so you don't have to be automatically thinking of the sharpening tool you might take more sort of experimental approach and try to basically increase contrast because that's what adding sharpening is all about so if we just take a closer look i'm just going to be now thinking how ca i can add sharpness to the image so when you are applying sharpness this is crucial this is the very first step you have to be looking at your image at 100 percent when you are on a retina display it is recommended to take a look at 200 percent magnification level so only at that level you actually can see what you are doing if you would be looking at your image zoomed out it won't give you the proper representation of the image so let's zoom in at 200 percent and let's take a look so i have chosen this area of the image because i want to focus mostly on the face on the hair and on the leaf so the first step i've already performed i have increased contrast with the curves i have three other ways that i can add contrast to the image the clarity structure and sharpening we've been already experimenting a bit with clarity and when i think of this portrait i want to maintain softness of the skin i would like to add a little bit of sharpness maybe to the eyebrows but if we maybe check the focus mask so let's just add the icon here so here is our focus mask let's just add it here done so if i enable focus mask this is showing me where the image is in focus i've been taking this image with aperture set at two so we can see that i was focusing on the model on the subject so all the areas that are covered with the green overlay they are in focus so i can add sharpening to the hair i can add texture to the leaf and first of all of course this is the female portrait so i want to keep it beautiful soft 
and I'm not going to be talking about targeted sharpening because I could be adding sharpening on layers so I could sharpen separately the leaf, the hair, and maybe I could apply a bit of sharpening, a bit of maybe clarity with the negative value to soften the skin further. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just focus on applying sharpening adjustment on one layer. So something that applies to the whole image without targeted adjustment. I think that without going into targeted adjustments, I think that the subject is already complex enough. So let's stick with this. So in case of this portrait, I want to keep the skin soft a bit of sharpening to the leaf and maybe to the hair. So I've already applied a bit of clarity. I wasn't happy with this because this applies contrast. Basically, this enhances contrast in the mid-tones, so it doesn't affect the leaf the way I want. So I want only to enhance structure. I don't want to get such a strong contrast between the dark parts of the leaf those large areas. I want to be operating on the micro level. So I know that the clarity tool is not right for this image. Plus what we've already seen at the beginning, if we push this, the whole background starts getting stronger and it gets more prominent. This is definitely something that I want to avoid. So clarity is not a good idea for this image. When it comes to the structure, let's again zoom in to 200%. Let's try with structure. So if I apply a bit of a structure, this works quite well. So with the structure applied at such a low value, we have fixed the detail. So the soft detail that was here in the hair and here in the leaf area. So we've managed to enhance a bit of the structure. So this could be a good alternative. So that would be before applying structure and after. So if I, I can go even a little bit further, make it a bit stronger. So especially that you will be able to see it on the compressed MP4 file on YouTube. So again, this would be before the image is way softer. So structure applies the adjustment on way smaller area in comparison to the previous two in comparison to clarity and contrast. So the clarity looks at big areas and it searches for contrast between large areas in the picture. And on the contrary, structure looks for small areas. It looks for edges. So structure could be an option in case of this image. So again, before and after, let's take a look what sort of result we can achieve with sharpening. So let's switch this off and let's jump to our background layer because we are going to be basically manipulating with the adjustments that were applied automatically by Capture One during the capture step. So we have amount at 140, radius at 0 0.8, threshold at 1. Let's just reset all these adjustments. So that's how our image looks like without any sharpening. So let's add it manually. So in the sharpening tool, we have four sliders. Let's first focus on these two amount and radius because these two other sliders, they are basically fixing artifacts that can get created when we are applying sharpening with these two first sliders. So first of all, the most important step is to set properly your radius. And in order to do this, we need to temporarily set the amount at quite high value. Typically, I would go for something between 600 up to even 800. So this is just temporarily. This is to have this amount really high. So now we can start working with our radius. So here the best idea would be to just double click highlight this value and operate with the arrows on our keyboard so we can be more precise. So now I'm just hitting my upper arrow on the keyboard and that way I'm pushing the slider towards the right hand side. You can see that by increasing the radius, I'm increasing sharpness in the image. So basically the radius slider 
is responsible for the area that is affected by the amount. So the, the amount, the first slider, this is self-explanatory. So this basically controls the amount of sharpening. And the second slider, radius, this basically controls how wide is the area in pixels that will be sharpened. So we want to get to place when we are now moving this slider. We want to start from the minimal amount and we want to move to the right very, very slowly. So we want to observe the image and we want to stop at the place where the halos will start appearing when they start being visible and when they start getting really distracting. So let's just push it a little bit further. So again, let's highlight it and going up. Okay, I think that now this is already too far. So let's stop at 0 0.8. I can see this line here. So halos will typically appear in the areas of strong contrast. So I can see the halo here, here along the jawline. So at this point, I have set the radius and now I can go back to my amount slider. The first operation of pushing our amount to such a high value, this is only temporarily. So now we can just go back to zero and we can start adjusting this manually. The first step was to just set the radius. We set the radius for this particular image at 0 0.8 and now we can start manipulating with the amount. So now I can push it to the right. And now I'm looking for the effect that the image will look sharp and crisp, but with no halos and no artifacts. So I want to have sharp image. So remember to be looking at your image at 100 magnification level or 200 if you are on the retina display. So we want to go for sharp but still naturally looking image. So we have reached 372. Let's try going a bit further. I think this is too much because my idea for this image was to enhance the leaf a bit, but I want to maintain the skin nice and soft. So if I just click on the on the word amount, this will show me the before and after. So this is before adding sharpening and after. And I think that for this particular image, this is perfectly enough. So with these two sliders, amount and radius, we have applied sharpening to this image. And in comparison with the previous method, so now we are operating at the micro level. This is the fourth way of adding contrast to the image of adding sharpening. So we are working with the sharpening tool. The previous method that we have performed on this layer, here we were working with the structure tool and I think that the result that we have achieved now with the sharpening tool suits better the image. So the image benefits more with sharpening that way at this really micro level and with this high level of control. So what are these two other sliders about? So basically the threshold, this helps fixing noise in flat areas in the image, in areas that basically don't contain any detail. So if we just move around here, we have beautiful detail in the texture. So we could focus on this part of the image or we could go this way. But remember that these sliders are here, but it doesn't mean that we have to push all of them. No. Just touch them if there is such a need. So in case of this image, I wouldn't say that the noise here distracts me. I don't really see any extensive noise. So of course there is some because this area is quite dark, but I would say this is perfectly enough. I don't feel any need to apply the threshold here because 
if let me just experiment, let me just show you how this would work in application. So if we start pushing it, this will remove the noise, the image gets softer, but it doesn't only affect this part of the image, it affects overall image. So by pushing threshold, we are basically removing the sharpening effect. So this is before, this is what we have achieved after our adjustments with a mountain radius and after applying threshold at such a high level, we have basically destroyed the result. So as I've just mentioned, if there is such a need, if you have just plain areas in your image that contain extensive noise, then you can try to play around with the threshold. And with this, you will be basically softening the noise in the background. But Remember, keep your eye all the time at the most important part of the image that you have just spent time sharpening and you need to just balance out all these features. So let's just get rid of this. And the last slider, halo suppression, this is self-explanatory as well. So this can help when you have places in your areas that basically contain some artifacts. So here, this bothers me a little bit this edge. So when you have the leaf and the edge that is crossing her forehead, there is this a bit of halo. It's not dramatic, but let's try to fix it. So we can push halo suppression slider to the right. This is pretty advanced feature. So this is helping really nice to get rid of the artifact. Let's just see before and after. So it softens the overall sharpening effect, but it still works. So it is not working that strongly at threshold. Maybe we can just move it back a notch so the halo is fixed, but we are not overdoing the slider. So this is before applying the halo suppression and this is the after. So we can see that after applying the halo suppression, the image got a little bit softer, just a notch, but it still works nice. So maybe we can now increase the amount a little bit. So this is all about experimentation. The halo suppression is really working fantastic. In case of this image, we don't have any problematic areas. Everything looks good. So if you have an image that has stronger contrast, you will have more of this sort of issues. And then working with this slider can really save your image. OK, so with this image, I have shown you the workflow of applying sharpening to the image with the sharpening tool. So just to quickly recap, we have started with setting the radius. So to do this, you need to always push the amount to quite high amount. So this would be typically between 600, 650 and 800. You do this just temporarily and once you push the amount quite high, then you adjust your radius. And of course, remember the first step, set your magnification level at least 100 or 200 percent if you're on the retina display. So first, you need to set your radius with the amount pushed quite far. After you have your radius set, you can start manipulating with the amount and you need to adjust it up to the value when your image looks nice, sharp and crispy without any artifacts. If you have some halos, you can fix them with this last dedicated slider, halo suppression. And if you have areas in your image, flat areas that don't contain detail that needs to be enhanced, but you have introduced some unwanted noise, this you can target with the threshold slider. However, in case of this image, we don't have such issues. So we will be talking in this video about the noise reduction tool, but not in case of this image, because I don't see any need for noise reduction. The background is dark. We have this nice 
soft background and there is no need at all to apply any noise reduction. So this is very, very important. Just the fact that the sliders are there, it doesn't mean that you have to use them. Let's now jump over and take a look at a different image taken with higher ISO value. So this one was taken at 400. So we have these three images of desert. I have taken them after the sunset. So the light was decreasing, the sun was going lower and lower, and I kept increasing my ISO. So with this one, we have 320, this one 1000, and with this one, we have 2000, the ISO setting. So I'm going to maybe start with this one because this is the most problematic image if we just zoom in, you can see. It. So now I'm 100% magnification level. Let's just get rid of the browser. So this is 200%. There are no adjustments applied. This is the raw image out of the box. And you can see already plenty of noise without applying any adjustments just in the original raw file. So this will be the perfect example where I can show you how to work on sharpening and how to get rid of the extensive noise. And here I will show you how to apply the noise reduction tool. And by the way, if you're getting value from my video, I would really appreciate if you leave me a thumbs up, if you leave me a comment. I'm always super curious to hear your feedback. I love reading your comments and I reply to every single comment I get under my videos in my channel. So if you like my videos, if you learn something new, I would always appreciate if you subscribe to the channel as well. So thank you very much for all the support that you are giving me. It is really, really appreciated. Okay, let's get back to our image. So in case of the previous image, the image was taken with quite a decent ISO for the particular camera. Both of them were taken with the Fujifilm X-T2. In case of this particular landscape, the light was really, really soft. So if we just take a look at our histogram, let's just maybe make more room here. So if we analyze the histogram, we can see that the image has very soft contrast. We have no blacks. There is no data here to the left hand side of the histogram, which indicates that we have no blacks. There is no really dark tones in the image. This big pile of data here represents all these sort of dark mid tones. So basically, if I hover over the image, you can see that this orange line is moving across the graph. There is no data in the left, which indicates that we have no really dark tones in the image. We can even take the color readouts if we want to. So this part here sorts of as the darkest. So let's get more precise cursor. So here we have 34 for the red, 37 for the green, 48 for the blue, and basically the general luminosity value. This is the last number displayed in gray, 38. So it is still far from the blacks. The black would be zero. So here we have 38. Here we have 34, so it's a bit darker and our vertical orange line moved a bit further towards the left, but we have no blacks and we have no mid-tones, no bright mid-tones, we have no bright tones and we have no highlights in this image at all. So this is how the graph that represents luminosity values look like. This is our histogram and as I have shown you with no adjustments at all from my side. You can see that there are no adjustments. We have already such a strong noise. So how can we approach this image? So first of all, I would go for levels adjustments. However, I want to maintain um, softness of this image. So I have taken this image in Oman. So this is the wide sands desert. I haven't manipulated uh, the color at all. This is the original color and basically the sand was white. The sun was going down. This was just after the sunset. So we have this very soft orangey tone here, but 
if I just go for the auto adjustment on levels, this will push the image a little bit too far. So let me just show you. To apply auto levels, you need to be on the background level. So let's just go for the second icon. So this applies auto levels adjustment. So Capture One basically pushed the data so it got stretched evenly across the whole graph, across the histogram. So this is, let's just take a look at our histogram. So I'm going to put it beside the levels tool. Let's reset this. So this is the original image, the original raw, just after importing it inside Capture One. There is no highlights, almost no bright mid-tones, a bit of dark mid-tones and no blacks. After applying the, the auto adjustment, the graph got stretched from the left edge, so it got pushed towards both ends. So now we have deep blacks and we have these strong highlights here. However, this looks super fake and this is not the scene that I have witnessed at all. So in most cases, I am recommending applying auto adjustment on levels. So this would apply to, I would say, 80% of images that people are editing. But in case of this image, this doesn't work because we don't want to just get that artificial effect. We are not creating black and white representation of the image. We are more interested in the original mood, in the atmosphere. We want to maintain the softness. We want to maintain the light that was there. And we want to go for way subtle adjustments. So pushing levels that far doesn't work at all. We can apply them automatically, but then just back off. So first of all, I want to make those blacks way softer. So here now I'm manipulating with the black point. So this was the original image and I want to increase the contrast a little bit, but as I said, I want to maintain the original atmosphere, the softness of the light. So I'm just applying these adjustments manually. So we can go for something like this. Let's just check before and after. So this is the original image. This is after enhancing contrast with levels. Let's maybe go for a bit deeper shadows. So with the levels tool, I'm just quickly preparing the sort of base for our further adjustments with sharpness. So in this tutorial, we are not going to be targeting color at all. I quite like the grayish silverish tones of this desert. The image is quite monochromatic. OK, so let's say that this sort of luminosity adjustments is sufficient. Let's maybe try the middle point. OK, as you can see, in case of this image, having the white border as the background really helps because if we had the background very dark or black, the image would look a sort of nice, bright and soft. But in fact, if we judge the luminosity adjustments against white background, we can still see that the colors are quite muddy and the image is very, very flat. It lacks distinction, it lacks punch. So this is what we are going to be targeting next. So on our background layer, we've just performed the basic luminosity adjustments. Again, this is the original image. This is the image that we have achieved after. So now we are going to focus on adding sharpness and don't confuse again with the sharpness only at the micro level. I'm not going to, at this stage, jump right into making those little sort of textures sharper. No. By thinking in this wider context, by thinking of adding contrast and sharpness, including those four ways, so contrast, clarity, structure, or sharpening, we can now pick the method that will benefit the image the most. So first of all, we can start with adding contrast at a global level. So this can be done very, very easily with curves and you don't need to even manipulate with these curves manually. So 
let's just quickly create new field adjustment layer. I'm just going to show you how you can apply curves with the ready preset. So once you have your curves displayed here, all you need to do is to hover over the hamburger icon, left click on it, and you have here at your disposal either contrast luma or contrast RGB. So the difference between these two is that the contrast luma basically doesn't affect your colors. It adds contrast on the luma curve. So if we had the luma curve selected and again, hamburger icon left click contrast luma. So now you can see how Capture One automatically adds this one to three control points and how it bends the curve to add contrast. So this is all done for you automatically by Capture One. This is a ready preset. Or you can go for contrast RGB. So in this case, the points would be visible if we had the RGB curve highlighted. And on this one, it affects color. So basically, it's up to you. As I said, I quite like those silverish tones. So I actually prefer adding contrast on Luma curve in this case. So I'm going to go for Luma and voila, on this layer, we can just rename it to curves contrast. So here we have added contrast to our layer with the very subtle Luma curve. So looking from the perspective of adding contrast globally, I can say that I have added sharpening to the image in a really global wide way because I have increased contrast between the dark areas in the image. There is the control point created in the dark tones. So it's pushed downwards. It is increasing. It is pushing these darker tones towards darker side of the spectrum. And the other control point is pushing brighter tones upwards. So this is increasing contrast in the image. So that is the first way, contrast. Let's now move over and let's talk about the second way. So again, going from global towards the micro adjustment. So here let's create separate adjustment layer so we can then switch them on and off to compare the results. Here, after adding contrast, here we will be working with clarity. So let's rename this layer to Clarity and let's move over to our Clarity tool. So as I have mentioned before, the Clarity tool adds contrast to the midtones. It targets midtones. And before we were working with the global contrast with curves. So I had the image just fit to the working space. But now when we start working with Clarity, it is really recommended that you look at your image at least at 100% or at 200 if you are at the retina. The image is very large. It is taken with the Fujifilm X-T2, so the resolution is really high and I don't want to just look at the small part. So let's stick with 100% and let's keep it maybe cropped that way. So we can focus on these dunes here. So. Clarity tool. So with clarity, if we increase the value, if we go for positive value, we will be adding contrast at the mid-tone level. So you can see that this doesn't affect highlights that strongly. It will be helpful as well to take a look at the histogram. Let's just push our histogram and position it here. So again, let's just quickly reset it. This is the histogram before applying the adjustment. And let's now again push our clarity slider towards the right hand side. So you can see that this affects the histogram, but in a quite subtle way, we don't see any of these lines jumping to the right. We are not filling in the gap here. So we are not introducing any strong highlights here, but we have added a lot of punch to the image just with this one slider. So as I've mentioned, in case of the previous edit, basically adding clarity, this is the lazy way of adding sharpness. And I don't know if it's lazy, but it works quite well. 
But very important thing is never overdo the clarity. So the clarity in Capture 120, the algorithm is quite advanced. So even if you push it all the way to the right, it still looks, I would say, sort of reasonable, but I would say always less is more in case of photo editing and going for such a strong value is not necessary, is not justified here because my whole idea was to maintain the original atmosphere, to maintain the soft light that was present in the image. And I want to go for sharpening. I want to go for stronger contrast, but I would say that at this amount, this is already a bit too much. So I'm going to move the slider to the left to make it a bit softer. So with the clarity at this value, it looks quite good. And don't forget that we have four different methods to choose from. Basically the natural, this is, this one has the most advanced algorithm. So with the natural, you won't affect the colors and you shouldn't create any artifacts. You shouldn't create any halos. The strongest is the punch. With this one, you will affect the saturation. So if you will be using the punch method, you will be adding contrast and this will affect colors. So at times it looks good, but I like the silverish tone. So I'm not going to go for punch neutral. You can experiment with these different methods, but typically I would go for natural. So as I said, the algorithm is the most advanced and you can get away even with quite strong adjustments without introducing artifacts. Okay, so on this layer, we have added clarity. Again, this is the image before adding clarity and after. And this image after all the sharpening adjustments, it will be a perfect example to show you how to reduce the noise. You can see how the noise got increased. This is the 200% beautiful noise here in the sky. Okay, so let's go down to 100 and let's now take a look and the structure slider. I'm not going to create a separate layer for that, or maybe I will. So this video is specifically on adding sharpening and I have uh, the structure as a separate step. So contrast, clarity, structure, sharpening. So let's create new field adjustment layer and we will create sharpening with the structure slider separately. So let's just rename this layer to structure. And now just to compare, we can switch off clarity and let's focus on the structure level. So clarity operates on much larger areas. It takes bright area and it puts it against dark area and then it increases contrast. So it's not working on the micro level, it works on large parts in the image. So when it enhances contrast, it takes into consideration the areas of basically different luminosity levels, bright against dark, and then it increases contrast. So this is what clarity does and it affects mostly midtones. Structure is the next step towards the micro level, the adjustment on sharpening on the micro level. So this will go more for the edges. So if I go for structure, so now after pushing structure slider towards the maximum amount, this actually looks like a drawing or even a lino cut. So if I go for 100%, you can see how artificial the look got, how artificial the, the effect is. It doesn't look like a photo anymore. It looks like a like an illustration, I would say. So this is before applying structure and this is the after. So that's what I meant that when you are deciding on the sharpening method, you have to take into consideration the image. So you have to take a look at the subject, you have to take a look at the ISO level, you have to take a look at the noise. So all these elements are really crucial when you are deciding on the sharpening method. So you, we can say for sure that structure doesn't work at all. And the reason is that we are looking at a 
landscape. So this is sort of vast open space and we are not really focusing at any detail here. So we have a bit of the structure here in the foreground. This can be actually fixed here in the lens tab so we can fix the light fall off. So basically this should recognize my lens. It didn't, okay. So I'm not going to do this now. If uh, Capture One doesn't recognize the particular lens that you have used, then you can manually try to find this lens here. If you don't find the lens, don't pick anything similar to your lens. Just go with the manufacturer profile. This will give you better results. So I can just fix the light for off a bit so I will get rid of those dark corners. Let's just make sure that we have no vignetting set here. No, because I have started editing this image without any adjustments. Let's go back to the lens correction and let's push this a bit further. So this will be brightening the corners of my image. So the image was taken with a wide angle lens and then we have this quite strong light fall of visible here. So we have fixed this here in the lens tab. So let's jump back to our exposure tab. So as I have mentioned, in case of this image, sharpening with the structure slider doesn't really make sense because we are looking at this vast space at the desert and there are no sort of objects in the image that will contain a strong detail. The light was already soft, so even if we have these textures here, they are lit in a way that they are not really standing out. Making these structures sharper simply doesn't make sense. So the viewer's attention will always go towards the brightest part in the image and this is this part so I would definitely put emphasis on shaping on sculpting this part further and here I can add a bit of sharpening in terms of the global sharpening what I've done already here with clarity but this enhances beautifully the image all over so I'm adding contrast to the mid-tones, but without going in such a detail if I would just operate with structure. So this is what I mean that you have to adjust sharpening method towards the particular image. So in case of an image when you would have some really interesting structure like animal's fur or maybe some fabric or some leaves that could work. But in case of this image, we don't have anything that would ask for extra punch for structure. So definitely the clarity works well and structure I'm not going to really push any further because this will be adding more noise to the image and we have already quite a strong noise after operating with clarity. So this is the image at 100 without clarity. The noise was still there, so it was softer, but I like the punch that we got with the clarity tool and the artifact that we are getting, this is the price that we are paying, is the noise. So let's now take a look at the sharpening tool and let's see if it will work in case of this image, if we can add it to the mix or if it will work better on its own. So let's switch off clarity. Let's just get rid of this layer and let's jump back to our background layer where we always have the sharpening adjustments that were automatically added by Capture One. So this was added during the first step of the Capture One's sharpening workflow, the capture sharpening. So let's go for 100% and let's just assess the image. So here definitely we could try to go a little bit further. So Okay, let's try to apply the sharpening in a manual way. So I like going with all these values towards zero and seeing the image without any extra sharpening. So my clarity layer is switched off. If I want to switch it on, this would be the image with clarity, but without sharpening. So it looks sort of strange because we don't have sharpening on this micro level. We have just 
some sharpening in the mid-tones. Definitely the image will need some sharpening with the sharpening tool on this micro micro level. So now we are operating at the pixel level. So on the background layer, the workflow that I typically apply for sharpening is to first set the radius. So to do this, let's go with amount at a quite strong value. Remember again, this is just temporary. Now with having the amount, maybe I went too far. Typically it works between 600, 650 and 800. Let's go for something like this, 800. Let's now highlight the radius and operate with the arrow on our keyboard, the upper arrow. So now we are pushing the slider precisely in a controlled way to the right. And we are again entering the illustration world. So things, starting look really artificial and strange. So this could be interesting, but this is not the effect that I'm after today in this tutorial. So, okay, I already went too far. And my previous advice was to push the radius slider up till the point when we will start seeing halos, when the halos start really being distracting. So we have no halos here, but things are looking a bit strange. So I wouldn't go further than this. Okay, so this is what we got. So I would leave the radio setting at 0 0.9. I wouldn't push it further and I would just go back to my amount slider, go back to zero and now I will try to apply it in a controlled way. So what I'm looking for now is natural looking image, quite soft because the light was very, very soft. It was already quite dim. So I don't want for any sharp, strong edges. I want naturally looking image, but still nice and crisp. So this is all about balancing out all these values, all these adjustments. So you can notice that I'm working with my clarity on because I'm really happy with the adjustment and I want to add sharpening to the mix. I don't think that it will work without clarity. So I'm now adding sharpening to the micro level. So I'm sharpening basically along the edges. Remember that the sharpening tools looks for the edges. So adding contrast with the contrast tool looks globally at your image and just looks for dark areas against bright, but areas, not the edges. Then what do we have then? And then clarity, it again looks for areas. It compares bright areas against dark areas and it pushes darks for darker tones. It pushes bright for brighter tones and that way it enhances contrast. But again, between areas, this is the key word areas. But structure already goes more towards lines. It looks for lines, for edges. And when we are operating here on the background layer with the sharpening, uh, tool. This definitely goes for edges. It looks at the edges at the pixel level. So if we zoom in, so we should be looking at our image at 200%. If we manipulate with these adjustments, they are definitely increasing contrast along the edges. So if I don't have my clarity on, this is sort of adding I would say sharpening that can be mostly visible maybe here. This is making this texture stronger. So capture one is calculating. This is before it is a bit softer. This is the after. So it got a little bit sharper. The effect is very, very subtle, very delicate, but I think it is lifeless. It lacks this punch that we can get in a, such a quick and easy way with our clarity. So I'm going to keep my clarity. And remember that if you are working with Capture One with the layers, you are working in a non-destructive way. So if at any point you decide that the clarity adjustment is too strong, you don't even have to go inside here, inside the tool and manipulate with the slider. 
you can just decrease opacity of the overall layer. So that's the reason why I'm working with these adjustments for this tutorial on separate layers, because I want to show you that you can either switch off the layer entirely and compare the image before and after, or you can just go down with opacity and that way you still have clarity, but you can apply it a little bit softer if it benefits your image better. Okay, so in case of this image, the mix of clarity and sharpening tool gives us the best result. Now let's take a look at the noise reduction tool, because this is a really good example to show how we can target this issue. So this is our sky and Typically, the noise, the artifact that will get created or the noise that was visible actually in the original image. Let's take a look at the image before any adjustments. We can see there is plenty of noise here in the flat sky area when we have some textures, when there is something going on, when there are more details the noise is not that strongly visible, but in those flat areas, there is plenty of noise. So after applying my adjustments with curves and with sharpening, unfortunately, this is what happened. We have this strong noise. So how can we fix this? First of all, we can try to work with the noise reduction tool. And what this tool does, so basically the reducing noise, this is always a balance between retaining micro detail and luminance noise reduction. And don't forget that some color noise was already removed automatically by Capture One. So when you are importing your image, the same as on the background layer, certain amount of sharpening was already applied, the same Capture One already applies noise reduction. So this can be visible here. You can see that out of the box, if I hit this little arrow, this resets the tool and it resets to the default values, which are 50, 50, 50. So for luminance, Capture One sets 50, details 50 and colors 50. So these numbers, they would be the same for every picture. And this is basically the sort of most balanced way considered by Capture One, considered by Phase One for this particular image for noise reduction. And I must say that in most cases, these adjustments work really well and there is no special need to touch them. So this applies, to be honest, as well to sharpening. So most of the images that I have taken with the Fujifilm X-T2. I have no experience with different cameras, to be honest. I have Nikon D700 and the Fujifilm X-T2. So with these two cameras, and especially with the Fujifilm X-T2, the contrast and the sharpness is already sometimes too strong. With Nikon D100, I would have similar experience. Maybe this is just me, but very often I'm not increasing sharpening at all because especially when I'm shooting in a quite contrasty light in the midday, I find it already too strong. I would be working with curves and I would sometimes even apply clarity at negative values because I find it really... I would say painful to look at. It's already too sharp, too strong. So my point is that you can apply sharpening if there is a need. So this was quite underexposed image, quite demanding light conditions. I really like the image. I like the composition. I like the mood. So I decided to work on it. I decided to see what is the potential in the file, what can be done. But if you have properly exposed images with the data that is filling in the histogram, I would say in most cases, there is no need at all to touch sharpening. And especially when you are looking at the image overall, you can add some targeted sharpening on layers. So this would be to just accentuate a little elements, maybe to sharpen the eyes or some piece of jewelry or something like that, but applying especially to over the landscapes 
sharpening at high amounts, this this is a very bad idea, I would say. But of course, every image is different and you should assess every image individually. So going back to our image, I was saying that Capture One, the same as applying some sharpening out of the box, it applies out of the box as well to your raw file without asking you for any permission. It applies a bit of noise reduction and this gives quite good results. So if you are feeling that your image might benefit from manual enhancements of these values, you can try to do this. So in case of this picture, I have added sharpening and I created noise so we can try to work with these sliders. So basically you can work with luminance and details. The detail slider will be preserving detail. It will make the detail sharper and the luminance slider, if you push it towards the right hand side, it will work towards reducing noise. However, you should be very, very careful when you are doing this because it will soften the image so it will create sort of counter effect against the sharpness that we have created. And my personal approach is that I don't mind a bit of a noise and I would rather go for adding some film grain rather than smoothening the image in an artificial way with the noise reduction. But some of you might need to apply this. So you can do this with the luminance slider. This is one of the tools that can fix the issue of extensive noise in the image. So of course, this happens, especially when you are shooting at the high ISO setting. So we have 2000 here. So you can push the luminance slider towards the right. This will soften the sharpness. But instead of going with such a high value on the luminance, you can back off a little bit the details slider. So this will soften the detail at the cost that you can just maintain a bit of a sharpness. So this is all about balancing. So let's just maybe zoom out a bit. We are now looking at 100%. So let's see again. This was the original value that we got quite a strong noise in the image. And this is what we got after just after. Okay, it's still calculating. So this is what we got after pushing this to 57. And we can maybe go a little bit low with detail. So this is if we go all the way to the left. So now the detail preservation got reduced. And if we go all the way to the right, this will push towards preserving detail. But this creates this super strong and really bad looking texture. It increases the noise. So you can see that the detail slider will add noise and you are trying to just balance this out with the luminance slider. So this was sand. It wasn't a rock. So I don't want to push detail that strongly to the right. Let's just go for something like this. So to be honest, I wouldn't go further with the luminance slider. This will be softening my sharpness here in these areas. I don't like it. So let's see. This is before. So we have those nice differences in luminosity in these rocks on the horizon. And if I just switch it on, this sort of melts together and it looks like a painting. So I'm just going to go back to the initial setting and I am going to show you a different way of removing noise in a flat area like this in the sky. So in certain images, you might get satisfying results with the noise reduction tool. I don't really like it and I use it only when I have really super strong noise, but I would rather go for a different method. So now let me show you an alternative method of targeting extensive noise in the image. So let's create new field adjustment layer and let's just rename it to noise 
sky. So I'm going to show you how this can work on a flat color area. And we are going to be working with color editor. Let's just move over there. And we are going to be working with skin tone. Yes, you are right with the skin tone. So we are going to sample in the sky area. Let's zoom out. I want to sample color that is somewhere between these two. So here we have the bright sort of pinkish tone here, the darker and the noise is mostly visible here. Let's sample somewhere around here. So we have our color editor. Let's put, no, let's keep this. We will need them later. So in our color editor, let's just hit on this icon here. So we'll make sure that the whole saturation range is included. And all we are interested now is focusing on the lightness slider. So we want to basically tell Capture One that all the colors within this selection, so inside this slice here, they should be all pushed towards the same lightness value. So we are working towards uniformity in terms of luminosity. So before, if we zoom in, so let's change the cursor. So if we switch this layer off, this was our sky before our noise correction with the color editor. So we can see, let's just maybe make this one smaller. Okay, perfect. So this is the sky before applying the noise correction with the skin tone tab. And now we have created our layer noise sky. We have sampled in the sky with the skin tone tab. And here we have pushed lightness inside the uniformity towards 100. So this basically tells Capture One that all the tones inside this color selection, inside this slide here, should be pushed towards the same lightness. So we can go for brighter tone. So this will slightly change the overall look and we can go for darker tone by basically this smoothens the sky, this smoothens the noise. So this is one way of reducing the extensive noise. So let's again see. This is after the application and this is before. So there is really a huge difference. So we have applied this to the sky. If we want, we can apply this to the noise that is visible here in the sand, in the dunes. This would require creating a separate layer because you can have only one skin tone editor on one layer. So let's create another field adjustment layer. And here, let's just rename it to noise sand. Okay, and let's just repeat this operation. So here our picker, let's zoom out and let's click, let's say somewhere here. Let's zoom in again, we want to be at 200%. And now let's click on this icon. So the whole saturation range is included. And now all we need to do is to just push the uniformity slider all the way to the right. So this sort of blends the pixels. It tells Capture One to basically uniform the luminosity across this color selection. This looks a bit artificial because we are not working on a flat color as we were in the case of the sky. We are now working with the sand and these dunes are three dimensional. So they are partly in the shadow, they are partly lit and working that harshly here with uniformity going so aggressively with the lightness is not beneficial. So let's just go back and we can just apply it maybe a little bit, but I would say that going further than 27, 24, it doesn't really make sense in case of this image. So we can maybe zoom out and now we can compare. So this is before applying the noise reduction on the sand and this is the after. So I just mean inside this color selection. So in fact, we can switch on 
this little button here and everything that is grayed out, this is not selected and everything that is in this sort of orangey, yellowy color, this is affected by our uniformity lightness sort of noise reduction. So let's untick this and this is alternative way of reducing noise in your images. So you can work with color editor if you are not happy with the noise reduction tool at your background layer. So let's maybe make this one bigger so we will see all the layers. So this was applied on the background layer. I have basically pushed luminance from 50 to 54 because I wasn't really happy with the way it was applying this noise reduction in case of this particular image. Maybe in general I went a bit too far with my luminosity adjustments because my original image was way more dim, way darker, but I liked the punch that I got with the clarity. So basically my sharpening and the other minor adjustments were sort of working towards the final result. So we have started with this image. But if you still have any questions in relation either to sharpening or if you have issues with some other tools in Capture One or if you have any specific idea for the subject that you are really curious about, please leave me a comment down below. And as always, if I think that the subject is interesting and uh, more viewers can benefit from the video, I will definitely make a video on it. And for those of you who want to learn more about Capture One, I have a comprehensive course on Capture One. You can find the link down below. And as I've promised already, there will be a special offer on Black Friday. So you can either sign up for Digital Art Classes newsletter to get the offer or you can just keep your eye on the video descriptions, on the future video descriptions. I'm going to post the link for the discount on the Black Friday. So thank you very much for watching. This was Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes and I will see you very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you by now.